So just really briefly, my name is Charlie brinkus Cuff. I'm the head of editorial at Galdem. Um, and yeah, I'll be helping to facilitate this amazing craft-led Q&A today. Um, we're going to be focusing mainly on the sort of behind the scenes element of the show um, but before we kick off I just really wanted to take this opportunity to talk about the things that I loved about it just super briefly um, and I think what I've loved about the episodes I've watched so far is that for me it really captures elements of my life as a sort of like black British creative in London um, and then beyond that on the more serious side it doesn't simplify any of the very sort of complex conversations that we need to be having around love and, and sex and, and consent in 2020. Um, it, it kind of, I think, lets you sit with them um, and come to your own conclusions. Um, and I really, really love that. Um, and it also has, I think, my favourite ever scene that I've seen about period sex. So if you haven't, <laughs> if you haven't got to that episode yet, then um, you've got something to look forward to. And of course, the cast, the cast are, are brilliant, amazing. Um, and that very neatly leads us on to their introductions. Um, I'm going to allow everyone to introduce themselves just really briefly in a couple of lines. Um, Michaela, we'll start with you and then Ruccio and then Papa, if you could introduce yourselves. I feel like um, Charlotte already did such a, a, a brilliant and lovely introduction for me. So I'll keep it short. I'm Michaela Cole and uh, I created uh, the show and act in it. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep it short as well because now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> My name is Maruche Opia. I play Terry in the show I May Destroy You and it was amazing. What was I supposed to say? <laughs> That's introduction enough. <laughs> Brilliant. Sorry, just muting, I'm muting. Can you hear me? We got you, yeah. Awesome. Um, my name is Papa Esiedu. Um, I play Kwame in the show. And yeah, I similarly had an amazing time and I'm really excited for people to see it, excited to share it with people. Brilliant. Um, okay, so just before we get into the questions, I just wanted to let everyone who's tuned in know um, there's closed captions at the bottom if they're needed. Um, and please, throughout the course of the conversation, start contributing to the Q&A section as well. Um, and we'll try and answer as many questions of yours as we can at the end of the Q&A. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's chat about this sh amazing show. Um, Michaela, I wanted to start with you um, and just to get a sense of some of the real life experiences that perhaps triggered the writing of this show. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, I guess um, uh, in, in 2016, um, I was very much like the Arabella you've seen if you've been able to see the first episode. I was doing an all-nighter and uh, went out to meet a friend for a drink for a break. And um, my drink was spiked by a stranger, just like Carabella. And um, this really was the, the root of the entire show. Um, after that, I then spoke to different people. I spoke to um, friends who had um, experiences uh, and trauma around consent and um, used a lot of uh, reality to inspire uh, the show, which is fictional. Amazing. And I was wondering in terms of um, Arabella's kind of, in the episodes I've watched, she's sort of grappling with also this kind of like, um, like nascent fame as well. So she's got people coming up to her in the street and, and really excitedly while she's like going on with all the shit in her head is trying to, um, to, to deal with what it means to be like an up and coming person within the creative industries. And I wondered how much of that sort of reflected your print as well, um, post chewing gum and yeah. Yes, I mean, to be honest, it, it, it doesn't really, that part doesn't reflect me very much. I never had um, a second album blues or um, uh, I'm scared about the next thing I'm gonna make. Um, uh, you know, and I guess with Arabella, another way that we differ in one of the few ways that we differ is that um, she, she never, uh, she has a lot of ease with uh, the people that know her work and come up to her in those episodes that we see. Whereas I think I definitely had a period after chewing gum where I became incredibly anxious um, all in my head. Um, but it meant that my interactions with people I didn't know who were very big supporters of my work um, were sometimes anxious experiences because of life just changing and uh, 
you know, changing faster than you, you could have imagined. Um, so that brought on uh, some anxiety. A question to you all, do you kind of feel, you know, I know you, you're all, you've all been in the industry for a while now, do you feel sort of prepared for the reaction that this show might have um, and, and that element of it? Because I think it's going to be a massive hit personally. Um, so I'm just interested in, in if you guys are ready for, for people's sort of like thoughts and feelings being sort of projected and, and, and that com the conversations. Maybe uh, Papa, we could start with you. Um, definitely, I, I feel excited about that because like that was one of the reasons why I wanted to be involved in the project. It, it, if, of, on the script, on paper, it's, it's, it's asking a lot of questions and it's provoking conversation, you know, it's making me think in, way, in ways that I have thought about things and in many times in ways that I haven't and making me kind of like think about like people's experiences from different perspectives. So I think it's, it's crucial in terms of like its artistic direction in that, in, in, in that sense. And I think it's, it's, it's vital that people do have conversations off the back of it so but like, I'm really excited I, I I really don't know what the response is going to be like I don't know what the reaction is going to be already like people that I've spoken to some people talk about how exciting it is some people talk about how controversial it is mm. some people talk like there's lots of different responses already you know so I think it's interesting that there's going to be a big spectrum of, of, of reactions but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm definitely excited about it. Cool. Rusha do you have anything to add there? Um, Papa's taking all the words out of my mouth. Uh, <laughs> again, it's a conversation. I think, you know, conversations start up, conversations that haven't been started or need to be started and will continue to go on. Mm. Um, a lot of people need to speak. A lot of people need to be heard. So I guess we're as, I'm as prepared as I can be, but I do expect it will provoke quite a lot. Um, again, like Papa, that was part of the reason why I wanted to be a part of this project because it was conversations that needed to be had and mm. you know to be explored. So I'm excited, um, but yeah, we're gonna see how it all falls, how it goes on. <laughs> cool. And then Michaela, um, I know that this is from what I understand um, one of your first experiences, or if not your first experience, of um, directing. Is that correct? Yeah, cool. Um, yes. so, yeah, what, what was it like, you know, um, you've co-directed a whole series at this point alongside Sam Miller, who I think uh, worked on Luther. I can imagine it was a really incredible experience. Yes, and it was, um, it, 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 it differed from chewing gum in some ways. It, it feels like um, I was still being very creative in the direction of chewing gum, but with uh, I May Destroy You, co-directing and having the title of co-director um, made me really appreciative of, for example, the first AD who makes the shooting schedule. It just made me think, okay, so I've written this thing. Someone has to figure out how we're gonna shoot it, how many hours we have in a day to shoot what we have. It made me very aware of the time. Um, what was also lovely was that um, I had a brilliant co-director and um, from very early on, we were determined to become one mind and we would do this with our hands, one mind. Um, and uh, I, I learned, I learned a lot from him. I, I learned to, to be patient and to listen and to really um, pick your battles. You know, that we've got this many hours left to shoot, the sun, down, the sun is going down, what's what's at stake what do we really want um to think uh so i, I was really taught that from him i, I had a great team and I, I guess this time uh my my vision felt like the first um the, f the the beginning of everything so every kind of way every department um uh took control and did their talent and did, made amazing sets and makeup and uh, costume the base point was what did you have in your mind and how do you see it? And that was always asked of me, which um, it felt like I was given um, a lot of trust. And uh, that, that was great. And did it sort of, you know, push your own creative boundaries as well in a way like, you know, having to envisage things over and over again, like in such a distinct way, if that makes sense? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it, it also made me, it gave me confidence because I was being asked what I thought and therefore I had to share it. And I think just sharing 
gives um, confidence and I was able to uh, art articulate the things that I saw. And then I realized, oh, these things are, are good. They're, they're worth shooting. And that was, um, that was nice. Uh, it was nice to, to realize that it was okay for my vision to be trusted, to kind of settle into that. They trust me and uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I can imagine that's really tricky to get your head around. I, I certainly know for a lot of creatives that is something, you know, trusting in yourself, trusting in your vision is the hardest thing a lot of the time. Um, and I guess in terms of the character development, maybe that's something I can put to you guys. Um, what attracted you to your roles and, and what do you think that you brought to them, each of you? Um, we'll start with Ruche this time. Um... Crazily enough, I had always wondered about how it would feel playing an actor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a weird one in itself because I was like, am I going to play myself? Am I going to play an actor? Am I going to act like I'm acting? So um, that was a question I had in my head. But um, there were some bits where I thought, you know, there are similar experiences. So Terry is not me. There were elements that I could relate to. And um, yeah, I just tried to make her her. I mean, when I spoke to Michaela, she said to me that, I mean, we had a, a few conversations where she said she couldn't believe that I was Terry because in her head, it managed to translate. Mm -hmm. And I found that that was really touching because I was like, that's magical. Like I'd never obviously known of the character Terry, but being cast for her meant that there was something in there and it was just quite amazing. Um, yeah I think the most yeah it was it was an amazing experience and um the acting part was a bit of the mind trouble but we got through it because I'm an actor and I act. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you definitely got through it I, I must say she's she's right to um see your words become human um is a rush of euphoria and that's what I felt when I saw Terry's Marouche's audition <laughs> tape, um, and, and the same with Papa. It's a uh, it's a beautiful feeling. So thanks, guys. You you were made for the roles, both of you. It sounds like. Um, and just for context, for those who haven't watched the series yet, you both play best friends of Arabella, so of Michaela's character, um, and the relationships that you, you yeah you've managed to create with both of them throughout the series. I think are really special and feel really really true to life in terms of what it's like to have best mates who really get you but make mistakes and and also figuring out how to talk to each other about the most difficult things that are going on in your lives and um yeah there's some really beautiful scenes that you those who haven't watched the series yet have got to look forward to um we're actually just following up on the fact that you played a, a struggling actor or uh, in the yeah. series um i was so fascinated by that one scene um, where you're trying to get cast for a beauty advert and you're yeah. put in this position that's like just loaded with microaggressions like oh, I felt it under my skin like and it, it was just like everything about that scene just hit so well um, <laughs> yeah um, and yeah I guess yeah so just again for a bit more context you're asked about your hair um, yeah. there's like the weird comments about like how many followers have you got on Instagram or like whatever it is mm. Um, and like undertones about like the diverse nature of casting. Um, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that scene and you know what what it is that that is saying to the industry at large. It seems to have a bit of a message. Um, I mean, the base of the scene, the way it was set up and everything, was very like a commercial casting. I've been to quite a lot of them, um, so um, I remember stepping in the room for the scene and I was like, oh, flashback. <laughs> <laughs> we back to commercials um so that was that was interesting but the little stuff like the followers I've heard there's some like that's what people do now I've not experienced that myself um but I've heard that's part of what happens now um I know that they are quite specific what they want in terms of a look so I know that I tend to go to an audition if I kind of have an idea of what hair I can go with so sometimes I dress up like this or if it was a more corporate thing I might change the hair up a little bit but these are things that are like undertones that are in these commercial castings so at the end of the day you want to look like what they're looking for um so that is part of it but it's also a bit worrying because as an actor going to a commercial casting you still want to be known for your work 
and not entirely your appearance, but because commercials are that quite, I mean, they're a bit surface. They're quickly, you know, uh, one minute, two minute on the screen. So I guess they kind of get away with it. But um, yeah, it's crazy how things are changing drastically. <laughs> Sorry, I just had myself on mute there. <laughs> Thank That's you. Cool. Um, and then, Papa, you've spoken about um, one of the interesting things I thought in terms of like the behind the scenes bit of um, filming this show, which was the fact that it's you know it's it's twelve episodes. You filmed them sort of like intermittently, from what I understand. So it wasn't like a like a linear process. And um, you sort of commented on the like some of the difficulties and like getting yourself in the like headspace to be like who you are because the character progression is so is so great throughout the the course of the series how did you sort yeah. of yeah how did you get yourself in the mind frame to like be who your character is in that moment at different stages of filming yeah it, it, I think it takes quite a lot of focus and quite a lot of concentration because um we didn't shoot in sequence you, re you very rarely do um um we kind of I, I mean we kind of shot like the first six episodes and then the second six episodes around in like kind of like did the first half and first half and second half and second half which is helpful but um yeah I think it requires quite a lot of discipline and focus and actually preparation I think I found on this to be like really um crucial to um be able to perform on a moment by moment basis because like we're, we're fortunate in the fact number one we're fortunate in the fact that like Michaela's always there so you can always talk to Michaela about what she intended for a moment or what she wants the character to be doing at, at any given moment which is the dream you know because usually like it's just the actor and the director and you're kind of trying to approximate something that might relate to the original story you know but like to have the storyteller in the room with you either as she's directing or if even if she's in the same scene as, as you is um was was really helpful so it kind of like rooted you in the moment because like what you want to be able to do is perform moment by moment and hope that the kind of like thread of moments comes to amalgamates to make a kind of like linear storyline but um yeah i think for me like i think having michaela there was a real was a real lifesaver especially in those moments where it required something that was like quite extreme or demanding or whatever um, you don't want to kind of like just like go too far with it like if in an emotional scene like you could be thinking about that for like two weeks before I've got this emotional scene that needs to shoot and then it gets to it and you like really go for it and it kind of doesn't it's incongruous with what's happening in the rest of the episode so suddenly it's like quite chill and then there's this huge like peak of like tears and whatever but Michaela's like Michaela's always got the story in her head she always knows at what point and um, at what point of like intensity or whatever that we're mm -hmm. at. So like, yeah, I, I, I think that was really useful for, for helping me to focus. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Is there, are there any particular sort of scenes you're thinking of when you're thinking of like that heightened emotion or where you particularly like needed to lean on her and, and get her feedback on things? Um, there's lots of scenes. Like, I think like the amazing thing about Kwame or, and, and really about all the characters is like, he's got a real spectrum of response to the things that he goes through in the episode without kind of like giving any spoilers away. Like something big happens to him in, in episode four and for the rest of the series, it's kind of like a study in like various responses to that. Mm -hmm. And some of them are like quite intense. Some of them are quite unhealthy. Some of them are quite full of love and joy and whatever. Like there's so, so like kind of everything was infused with something quite deliberate and particular both in the writing and like I guess it was my job to bring that out in the performance. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah I mean that, that moves us quite neatly on to another question I had for you which is about um, that scene, scene that I think you're referring to at the end of episode four. Um, yeah. and, sorry this is going to be a spoiler for, for people who haven't yet watched it um, but it, it's, it's quite a graphic scene where your, your character is sexually assaulted um, and, and, and raped by, by a man on a date. Um, and I, I know that you were sort of supported through filming, um, I think, and I presume this, happened, this was for all of you, with an intimacy director. Um, and I just wanted to talk to you a bit about that process and, and how, you know, when you were filming something that looks for the audience to be so incredibly intense and, and traumatising, you were sort of supported through that um, 
because I, I imagine that that must have been like a, a real sort of concern for for the people behind the scenes yeah yeah I think I think um yeah you're right it it's about the way um the performers are looked after in those moments you know mm -hmm. I think um the 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 process was thorough and always uh, had us at the center of the thought you know so we kind of met up we met up before we even started filming to choreograph well not to choreograph but to talk about these scenes and to kind of like talk a lot about consent this is a this is um a show about many different things but one of the things that it kind of like challenges are our questions about consent so of course we need to be sure about what we're what we're consenting to as we're performing so we worked with an intimacy coordinator called Ita O'Brien who's fantastic and she's worked on like huge huge shows and big shows but like she's 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 a real unique kind of like um human being and collaborator you know she really she really focuses on you and what you understand about a scene and what you're trying to bring out of the scene and how you're comfortable doing it and she will overrule anyone she will overrule a director first ad um a, another actor in order to protect you and there's something about that which allows you as a performer to feel relaxed and allows you to feel um yeah that you can focus on the job at hand and i think like and i'm sure michaela will echo this like it applies to all different types of scenes it applies to like of course like a really um intrusive and yeah, violent, I guess, assault scene like mine, but it, uh, uh, it also applies to like the more light-hearted scenes, which are just about like, I mean, again, I don't want to go into spoilers, but you were talking about a certain scene earlier on, like it, that, that needs to be choreographed with the same amount of um, dexterity, I guess, and delicacy. Um, so yeah, it was about allowing us to feel relaxed and then we can really commit to the, the size of that moment because like with those kind of beats in the story you can't underplay them you have to really go for it you have to go there in order to honor what the storyteller is trying to communicate so um, yeah I think the structure was the structure helmed by an intimacy coordinator was crucial in order to, to help that happen yeah Michaela it would be great to hear from you like you know how how you how you did you were you involved in finding the intimacy um coordinator um and just also what your the experience was like making sure that you were right sensitively around these issues of, of sex and consent yes um yeah i think someone sent me an article um with Eta. it was like an interview <clears throat> in the guardian i think and i forwarded the email to phil clark my co-exec producer and i said we need her and um then we were lucky enough to <laughs> get her um Yes, it was. It, it, I mean, not only is it important because of the safety, the mental and physical well-being of the cast, it is also great because, like Papa said, it enables us to go there safely. So you, we can get what we need from the scene with all the safety measures in there. Um, and what I like about Issa is that she is this kind of like energy that comes into a set and she is not um, beginning from her head. We're all quite heady in sets. You know, we're thinking about the time, the lines, the this, the da 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 da. Issa comes in and she's like, let's pretend to be bonobos. And she doesn't even really talk about that. She just goes into bonobo sounds and begins, literally just goes on her knees and <laughs> disrupts everybody's patterns of being very heady. And once you're like, yeah, no, we do have bodies. Let's just get into our bodies. And there's nothing wrong with this and there's nothing weird and we shouldn't feel like weird actors in the middle of a set that have to do things this is what we're here for and she definitely gives um that confidence in terms of writing um this kind of content which is um it's delicate content it's very delicate content uh and i think for me um it i, I always uh stayed with um the perspective of the experience of the victim, the survivor, whatever you want to call this person. Um, I never wrote um, outside um, imagining them. I got in and I became them or like Arabella, I already was her. Um, and I, I tried to step into the shoes of the character and see what I saw. Um, so always beginning and ending with 
um, the person experiencing rather than gazing at them from outside, um, I, I think helped, helped me to, to try and stay on the good line um, in terms of the, the content. That's a really, really beautiful way of framing it, I think. Um, I actually just wrote that down, staying with the victim, like... Um, Wicked. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, <laughs> I was just thinking about that line symbol. Um, in terms of just moving back to you, Ruche, I one of the things I also wanted to chat about was um, your and Michaela's relationship. Um, within the series. This is this is in part because I, I yeah obviously really enjoyed the episode which is set in Italy and you guys have um your wild night out. And Michaela, wow well, like you you play someone who is on on Molly like you know to the nth degree. <laughs> the wobbly jaw I was like wow <laughs> thank you. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Warwick, I wanted to know how the pair of you um, sort of developed your friendship and that chemistry both on and off screen because I imagine you know it, it's a process of it and I don't think you guys knew each other like well prior to filming this. We didn't know each other well um, we had been on Top Boy years 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 ago and we'd only met briefly on set so we were in the same scene but we weren't actually on camera at the same time so we were all in a waiting room with lots of people and we were having like general conversation but um, I remember when I went into the room to meet Michaela and the cast and director Julie Harkin and Sam Miller I think I'd had two auditions before then but we walked in and it was just there was chemistry immediately and we just sat there and we did the scene and Michaela just sat there looking at me the whole time and I was like, okay, girl. Yeah. But it was, it was the most incredible energy. I remember walking out of there feeling, what the hell was that? But it was quite almost tangible. Um, I felt like I just had the most amazing date of my life. It was just like we clicked immediately. And um, it, I was really excited about that. And then uh, I think we had our first rehearsal where I then met Papa properly and the three of us were in a room together and I was quite concerned about it because I was like, if we don't all get on uh, as off screen, how are we going to work on screen? But as soon as we all got in the room together, it was just magical. And I think it really, really translated on, on screen. Um, the Italy episode, we actually were just playing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> It felt like I was out on a night out with a friend. So um, we've actually, yeah, we've got quite a bond now. We were fake friends, but now we're real friends. Oh, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> it sounds like you flooded, flooded your eyes at her, Michaela. In the, in the oh, do you know what? Oh. And, it's all, and I, know, I was so, when she came in the audition room, I had all this, and it's because I'd seen her tape. So I'd fallen in love with her already. Like she, her tape was so exciting, but she walked in and it's like, I was so excited by her and obviously she wasn't to know how much I, so it must have been weird because I was just sort of like, she's like an exciting dream. Like so <laughs> yeah, um, it, yes, the, it was, uh, there was, there was chemistry. It was, uh, yes, it's, it works and it works off screen as well with, I, it was, I don't know, it's very good. I, I like you. <laughs> I like you too, girl. Yeah. I want to hear, hear your love story as well. Did you have a similar love story with Michaela? <laughs> I mean, like, Michaela could tell this story if you, if you wanted her to, but it's actually a very different type of story. Oh, uh, is it? I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I'm, I, I've known Michaela for a long time. We, we were at drama school. So we are in the same year at drama school. So we've been friends for a long time and, um, and like, spoken regularly and whatever. And, like, I actually remember... I, I like and Michele's been writing this show for a long time and like we've been chatting about it like intermittently as, as she's been writing it and she was talking about how it's going into production and so on and so on and so forth and like obviously I'm an actor here and I'm just like staying quiet you know just like being supportive being like and she's like yeah I wonder who'd be good for this I wonder who'd be good for that and they're like yeah, I mean who, who knows right and then <laughs> she says right that um the casting director, amazing casting director, Julie Harden Parkin, who I actually have a lot to um, be grateful for, suggested me to her. And Michaela was like, yeah, maybe, actually, maybe. <laughs> 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 right? I never thought. So, 
so anyway, anyway, I came in and did the audition. It was great. It was fantastic. And to meet um, Michaela is that, and to see Michaela and to meet um, Sam and Simon and everybody. But like, it's just, it's, for me, it's interesting because like, our relationship is based that almost outside of the idea of like working together in that way. It's based like we've, we've got a friendship that comes outside of that. But as we perform together, I think it fed into that relationship. The basis and foundation of our friendship really kind of like, I think, infused um, the relationship on screen. And same with Maruche, like, as she said, like, the first time we met, we kind of like sat outside in the park eating sushi for like three hours as we were waiting to go in and rehearse. And it's just like, it's natural. So they made it very, very easy to, 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 to look like you like them on screen. That's wonderful. Um, <laughs> Michaela basically snaked me up until the last moment. <laughs> I, yeah, basically, I just didn't even, it didn't occur to me that it just never ever occurred to me. And it is strange because, you know, um, Papa and I are so close that at the time that I was assaulted, he's one of the people I called in, in those kind of hours where I was like, I think something's happened. And it's odd that I, and then I'm talking to him about this show. And I, I, I think, I don't know, I sometimes wonder what that was like for you, Papa, when you came into the audition, because it's kind of trippy. It's weird because we're making a show about it. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't like, and I've spoken to you about it before. I definitely felt like that was, I found it really difficult to read the first time I read it because obviously it is fictional. Um, and it's not Michaela's story, but like there are echoes and like, um, yeah, reflections of real reality in it. So I found it really difficult. And I was, still, and I, I remember I rang Michaela and I was like, are you sure? Are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you can do this? Like, this, this sounds hard and everything. Um, and like Michaela's like alien levels of amazing. So it, it would take something, it would take someone like her to be able to do it. But like, yeah, definitely when I first, I, I first read it, I was intimidated by its closeness to reality, I think. That's a good way of putting it. Michaela, did, did you find the process, um, so you, you'll probably be asked this, this question quite a lot, but um, did, did you find the process cathartic in a way, um, especially having, having such a long time to develop it and sort of? Uh, the writing, mm. deeply. The writing, it, you know, it was two years of writing this. I never did another job. I wasn't acting in something whilst also writing a show. It was the only thing that I did for two years. And, um, you know, traveling to places in the middle of nowhere where this is all I would do, escaping my habits to just think about this story. And um, it is, you know, it means I've had to go to very, um, uh, dark places you you know I've had to access um I've had to go into the trauma as if it is still happening as if it's just happened and then come out and 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 find the lightness in being able to know that I'm reflecting on something that has passed um it, deeply cathartic and, and beautiful that it, I feel so um grateful to have had the opportunity to do this and to, to spend so much time of my life uh, involving myself in a fictional story that is a reflection of the, the real life that so many of us are living. Uh, it's, it's, it's been the most um, cathartic joy of my life. Um, and acting was really uh, more like, um, uh, as cathartic as any other, as playing any other ca uh, character, I always find characters very cathartic, um, but it also, because you're working with other other people, there's actors, and it, it's it's um, a very it feels like an intense play. We're playing, but it gets really dark and really light and really dark. But we're playing. I'm ple I'm pleased to hear that it's been cathartic, and it's also amazing that you had that space to just do do it. Like, um, yeah, it, it's a, a rare and beautiful thing. Um, how um just we've got a couple more questions for me and then we'll move into the q a but just um yeah um how did the sort of the script and, and the writing change over the years that's my other other final question to you michaela 
Oh, I mean, yes, uh, in, in some ways, massively, in, in a few ways, it didn't change at all. Uh, there's this, so basically the way I begin, I go away, I run away somewhere, and I write uh, what I call vomit drafts. So I did this um, for chewing gum as well. And uh, I had found Phil Clark, who uh, works for Val, created Val, Various Artists Limited. And Phil was the head of comedy at Channel 4 when I did chewing gum. So I was always very determined that if I am going to go anywhere, if I really want to make sure uh, I'm making a good partnership, I need to find Phil. So I tracked him down, I found his office, I went to see him uh, and he was game. So I go away, it's in the middle of nowhere and I write the vomit drafts and then I deliver them to Roberto, who's also at Val and Phil and Natasha, the script editor. And what they do is they look at these sort of 12 containers of vomit and they try to figure out what on earth I might have been talking about. So they kind of go inside and they go, okay, is that a tangerine? Was you, is that, is, what, could you possibly, what does this mean? And then I, they ask me all these questions and I have to answer these questions. And as I answer the questions, I realize where I haven't been quite clear in the vomit. So then I go back and I come back with draft one. They ask me more questions. I come back with draft two, draft 191, draft 192, and then we have to shoot. Short, short and sweet then. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, so just one final question. This is for all, all of you. Um, Ruch, I'll, I'll direct it to you first. Um, it sounds like, and obviously you can't say any different because Michaela's here with us, but it sounds like it was a really positive process, um, like genuinely a positive process filming this, um, being part of the creative process, um, and now, you know, it's about to hit the screen. Does it give you um, hope for how the industry can progress? You know, the use of an intimacy director, a really close relationship with a person who's directing and writing it. Like, does it make you hopeful? A hundred percent. I have to say that this um, whole, the whole shooting process, we did about six months, and it was a very respectful and safe set the whole way through. Um, I actually didn't do my sex scenes myself. I had a body double because mm. I wasn't comfortable to do that. And um, they were quite amazing to say to offer a body double because it was obviously necessary for the story and everything was done in a respectful, safe manner. I think there were many things put in place because the sensitive, there's a real sensitive um, topics in it, but they made sure that everything, they had a, a therapist who was available to everyone, cast and crew. And um, I think they did an amazing job because I never, nobody, I don't, I personally felt safe and respected at all times. If I had an issue, I could raise it and it was addressed in a respectful manner where we came to a conclusion. But it was a definitely, definitely a really good experience for me. Um, diversity as well. There were a lot of people who were from different walks of life, different races, and it was, it was great because I never ever felt uncomfortable at any point in time and I think it was a complete vibe and I, I don't know if anyone else but I'm sure because every, every day was like I was going to see my second family. I mean we were seeing each other every day for six months more or less. <laughs> so it was a wonderful wonderful experience and I'm hoping that every other set I go on to after this is similar because I'm going to have issues if it's not. <laughs> Cross fingers for sure. Papa, what, did you, would you say your experience was the same on set? No, I thought it said nothing. Uh, uh, yeah, I, have to, I, have to, I absolutely, of course, of course, um, echo what Marucho is saying. And um, yeah, I kind of think that like, you can't take a step back once you start working in this way. Espe I mean, it's, uh, it's, especially with the uh, intimacy type stuff, it's I, like working in this way, you kind of think, I can't believe that it was ever not like this like how like and it makes you I think 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 and feel for performers that have had to work in less amenable situations in the past you know so it has to be like this at a minimum going forward but um yeah generally I think if you're going to make um a show that's kind of like ferocious and direct and like confrontational and full of life and rich as this you have to infuse all levels of the production with um with with the same kind of spirit and that's, um, I guess that kind of comes from whoever, whoever happens to be helming the project, you know, but like, yeah, I think we take our lead from Michaela. She's, she's assured in the way that she works and it kind of like melts down into everybody else. So yeah, I'd really love to say that that's, that's how all other future projects would be, but it depends, you know. 
sorry. Um, cool. All right. Um, Michaela, did you have any final words just on that note? I, yeah, I mean, just to say it, every, every day of this shoot, although uh, very challenging, was beautiful. And actually, uh, you know, probably you say you take your leave from me. There's something magical about television when it works. How we, it happened to be the most perfect set of heads of departments who went and sourced the most perfect teammates. Um, Sam, my co-director, was... Uh, he's a beautiful man. He's collaborative. He's kind. He's patient. He doesn't have ego and he didn't mind just stepping back and letting me run wild a little bit. And um, we worked well together and it, it just feels really precious and it, it was very diverse. And, I, you know, people would sometimes look around and go, wow, it's cool to, that we're all here, all of us, you know, um, it feels good. Beautiful. And it does give me hope. Sorry, you asked me if it gave me hope. Um, it does give me hope because I feel like this show has, has yielded positivity and it gives me hope that maybe more opportunities will come for uh, creatives like me to have a chance to do something like this. Um, I, really, I, I really hope so. Absolutely. And, you know, I think as I sort of mentioned at the beginning, as, as a black British creative, it, it feels really special in it. And amongst everything else that it tackles, I think that it does a great job in representing um, parts of my life, yeah, which I had never seen on screen before. So thank you. Thank all of you. Um, that's all the questions for me. I'm going to move on to the Q&A now. Um, so I'll, I'll read out the name if um, the person has, has got their name on um, and then you guys some questions so so far we've got about seven seven questions so um this one is for michaela right at the top um so an anon an, an, an anonymous attendee is asking <laughs> how did you, you decide how many episodes would be needed to tell the story fully and um why did you decide on half hour episodes rather than an hour episodes uh <clears throat> i really don't know why the number was 12 I went into the BBC and I said, it's going to be 12 episodes. And <laughs> Pierre said, 12? And I said, yeah, 12. Based on nothing rational. <laughs> so, um, and then it, it just happened to work out. It just happened to work out. So I don't know. Um, what was the other question that she asked? Or he? why half an hour instead of an hour oh that's it that's it uh well i kind of had a thanks thanks Bumps. um i probably had more uh, experience in the half hour domain um from chewing gum and i like um i like pace um so the half an hour uh just it just felt more comfortable for me it felt more achievable nice um and then this is from Sydney Yeats, um, for Michaela, um, again, asking whether or not it was hard to get the show commissioned or whether that was um, an easy process. Uh, it, was, it was a really easy process. Um, so I think this is quite unusual, I have to say. I, I uh, was lucky enough to be working on Black Earth Rising, which enabled me to meet um, peers uh, and then I went in to meet Piers and Charlotte and I spoke about the project for about an hour. Um, and then um, a couple of days later, I got an email from Piers uh, saying that they would love to commission it straight to series. I didn't write a treatment or a pilot. Um, I just described it and they were incredibly supportive. Piers read my vomit drafts. I think I would like send drafts at like two in the morning. And he read with enthusiasm and love and support. I've been very lucky. What a legend, picking up the emails at 2 a.m. He's a ledge. Well, I mean, he probably picked him up at like 7, but he wasn't <laughs> mad at the 2 a.m. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, you kind of touched on this a little bit, um, but another question to you, Michaela, from the, the same person is whether or not you had a cast in mind when writing the show, um, or if that came a bit later. It came later. Um, I didn't. I didn't. Um, we, I just, the one thing I did know was that I wanted Julie Harkin to cast it because uh, I loved the things that she's cast. Uh, she's very good at finding people that seem 
authentic, as if they're not acting. We've just found people who were already living the lives of the characters that I've written. She has a way of knowing where they are. Um, so that's her magic. Beautiful. Um, and then one for uh, Ruchi and Papa. Um, <clears throat> this is from Francis. Um, and they have said, thank you so much for sharing your experiences and that they're super excited to watch the full show. Um, and they were hoping that you could share um, a challenging experience that you had whilst fil filming, um, how you felt and how you overcame it. Um, and then Michaela, the same question to you, except the biggest challenge while, whilst writing the series. Um, you both look <laughs> like you don't have an answer yet. Uh, I'm going to go with Papa because you're smiling now, so. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shadow. Um, challenging experiences on set. I guess, like, I mean, I've already spoke a lot about it before, but, like, um, some of, like, some of the sex scenes um, were kind of like, I suppose, longer and more, more intimate than scenes that I've done before. So like, I had to kind of think, I like, I had to get over like, se like seemingly minor things like my like body image stuff and like the idea, what like the idea of like doing something like that in front of a crew of people that I didn't really know and and. I think we were shooting it like we were shooting it in the winter as well so it was just like physically cold as well like it, it, it was challenging in many ways I guess but um, um, I think for me like it was just like open communication helped me to get over that like being able to communicate things that I was unsure about or communicate things that um, I was yeah fearful about I guess um, with people that were willing listeners um and yeah getting getting clear communication from the intimacy director the director Michaela my scene partner about what we were actually trying to do you know like having clarity about that is infinitely useful because it means that you don't feel like you're flapping around in the void of like approximation you know so yeah and for you Ruche, have you thought of a, a challenging scene or moment there was that many challenging scenes for me personally. Um, no, they're actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm pleased that there wasn't. Um, I can't yeah. think of anything challenging Just that wasn't thing. able to be discussed. I mean, like um, Papa said earlier, having Michaela on set was a great, great, great thing because if there was any confusion about what the character was feeling at the time, um, that was great because Michaela was there and Sam was there and it was, you know, a wonderful collaboration. We, we would all discuss it at the same time. So I would only say, you know, just character stuff more than anything when I wasn't sure where the character was or what they were feeling. Having Michaela there and Sam to help us get through it was great. Having the script writer, that the writer on there is literally the best thing ever. <laughs> Amazing. Um Michaela, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip over that question for you just because there's a few more that have come through for you. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, another person has asked um, to Michaela, did you have any difficulties staying true to the representation of how you wrote the characters when adapting it to the screen? Um, and if there was any sort of pushback from higher ups or um, or anything like that. Um, and then also um, any advice on how to handle pushbacks if like I don't know if this is something that you have experienced um without sacrificing the characters identities interesting um hmm yeah sometimes uh you know you have an idea of what a character will be like and sometimes an actor will come and show you but it could be this and a lot of my pushbacks were internal so I was kind of thinking that but that's not what I imagined um, so sometimes I had to really wash away um, the, the, the idea for what was going on in front of me and see how that actually could be fantastic. I think um, uh, pa Papa was one of those um, actors for me. Sometimes I'd be like, but I didn't imagine it like that. But then I'd be like, but this is so much more complex and it made me go, oh yeah, that old version. No, 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 what's this? Um, so, uh, you know, pushbacks, 
I think a lot of those times my my team were on the same page as me and I would sometimes go guys I know that we had this idea but this is why actually this might work and they were very they were very em embracing of me I, I have to say um, sometimes I would be expecting um, resistance um, and then I'd have to realize that there, wo there won't be res resistance that they, they, they trust me it's like I arrived with um, with with baggage um, but if, if ever I thought something is going wrong as I, I would make sure I could articulate why uh, and then go to the team and occasionally it can't be worked out because there are so it's a huge thing it's a domino effect there are consequences and pros and, and cons so sort of just um, listening and and choosing when to push back and I guess the way I am I I I, I you know um I don't know that they, they will tell you I'm I'm naturally a persist persistent my my con I'm never afraid about pushback um I never I'm I'm I don't know I'm just you have to you have to know what you um what is the the nugget what is the center of truth in your in your project what is that thing and there's a thing in, in the middle of what you create and you understand it and it sometimes can't be expressed in words and sometimes there can be um pushbacks and and notes and advice and warnings and as long as you keep the nugget true you can really try to try and find a way to um to solve problems you know a lot of the, the pushbacks are about anxieties and confusions and as long as you hold on to the the thing you know to be true at the heart of the project you you can become flexible and figure out a way to solve problems whilst uh, keeping your integrity and your authenticity as a creator thank you michaela um just to make everyone aware um we're gonna do two final questions in the q a um and then we're gonna end um because yeah, it's been a, a lovely, but um, a lovely conversation, but we're drawing to the end of our time. Um, so the two final questions, um, I think this one was directed towards Michaela, but I'd be interested to hear just very briefly from all of you on this. Um, was it hard to get out of character after sort of long and difficult days of shooting um, and what you did for self care to sort of like separate yourselves from the character? Um, maybe Papa, we could start with you and just, just a few words on it and, and we'll go around and then we'll have one final question and that's it. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah, I always find like the end of the day to be a really important part of the process, you know, so like at the end of the day, you drive back to the makeup trailer, get your makeup taken off before you go home. And I always like make a point of like having a proper like separate conversation with people, like with the makeup artists, with the drivers, with um, the ads, to kind of like wash that kind of experience off. I think it's it's important not to take it on back back home, basically. Um, I at the end of the day, when I leave a character, I take my wig off. <laughs> Once you take your wig off, Terry had her hair, so Terry was, that was the first thing to do. Um, I also speak to my family to remind me of who I am, and they're always around me, a phone call away or wherever, and um, that's, that's kind of my kind of self-care, reminding me, right? Let's go back to my routine now, Terry. Terry's done for the day. <laughs> I know you guys had a really good um, hair person. We haven't had a chance to talk about it, but yeah. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, sorry, just finally, Michaela, um, any sort of self-care practice that you do after the shooting? Uh, to be honest, uh, this shoot was uh, a bit of a marathon for me. It was uh, come home, amend scripts, learn lines, sleep, try and get you seven hours, uh, plan the scenes that we're going to shoot the next day. It was all a bit much. Um, but when things were quite difficult, I spoke to Lou, we had a therapist on um, standby the whole time, Lou Platt. And uh, in terms of taking the character home with me, um, I mean, this definitely, I, uh, I, the residue remains in me from every single character I play. I, so I try to just take the good bits from the characters because I'm always taking something. I, I haven't mastered the art of, um, of finding separation between myself and the characters yet in anything I've done. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe that's okay and it's just, it's... Uh, yes, I think so. I find the characters, I look for what's inspiring about them and I try to make sure those are the bits that I take.
amazing um thank you guys for, for sharing those tidbits of advice i imagine they'd be very useful for um anyone else who's an, a performer um final question um this is for michaela um so the question is whether or not you have any advice for young black British directors that want to get into film and TV. A broad question, but if there's like a, you know, a key piece of advice that you wish you had known as like a young um, black director, uh, what would it be? Uh, to really believe in your vision and to understand that uh, when you don't compromise on that thing in the center, uh, that's what makes your um, your idea or your vision um, special and that is what we want to see the uncompromised vision that you have and to not be afraid uh, and to maybe uh, believe that people are here to help they're here to help we are we are here <laughs> um, amazing all right thank you so much guys you're all incredible i hope everyone tunes in to watch the series on the 8th of june um yeah it's 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 really good remarkable remarkable stuff um and thanks for being so uh, such brilliant interviews with me today as well uh, nice to meet you charlie you're awesome nice to meet you. um all right it's, it feels weird not to be able to like give me a hug but like this is it <laughs>